good evening and welcome to the news live on Channel I. A very good evening indeed. I'm Nitya Sar Chandra. I'm Javed Bonzo. We begin with the headlines. The president is on an official visit to three Middle Eastern countries. Another 15 Indian fishermen who violated Sri Lankan maritime territory have been kept under remand custody. Consumer Affairs Authority to carry out extensive raids on milk food hoarders. Minister of Economic Development said that the Divinagma Department has a massive task to perform for the development of the country. More than 100 persons have died by election eve violence in Bangladesh. Well, for those and other stories in detail, President Mahinda Rajapaksha left the country for a three-day national official visit. He scheduled to meet the heads of states of Jordan, Palestine and Israel. Mr. Felix Pereira and the Chief Minister of the Western Province, Prasanna Ranatunga, met President Mahinda Rajapaksha and the First Lady, Madam Shuranti Rajapaksha, who arrived at the special guest terminal, the Bandaranaik International Airport of Katanaika. At this occasion, the President appointed the Western Province Minister Nimal Lonsa as the Gampa District Organizer of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party. After having a cordial discussion with the people who arrived at the airport to convey wishes, the President and First Lady left for Jordan. Meanwhile, President Mahindra Rajapaksa, starting his state visit to the Middle East, has arrived in Jordan. The aircraft carrying the president and his delegation reached the Amman airport in Jordan this evening. The president and his delegation was warmly welcomed on arrival by the acting general secretary of the foreign ministry of Jordan, Mohammed Taisir, and his high-ranking officials of that country. A group of Sri Lankan representatives in Jordan also attended this occasion. President Mahinda Rajapaksa is scheduled to hold discussions with King Abdullah Al ibn Al Hussein of Jordan tomorrow. Attention will be, will, be, will be focused during these discussions on enhancing bilateral political and economic relations. Upon completion of his Jordan visit, the President will leave for Palestine on a two-day official visit. In Palestine, the President will hold bilateral discussions with President Mahmoud Abbas of Palestine. He will also pay his respects to the mausoleum of the former Palestinian president Yazar Arafat. The president is also scheduled to meet the members of the Sri Lanka Palestine Friendship Association and pay a visit to the Church of Nativity in Bethlehem. Subsequently, the president will make a two day official visit to Israel and there, are, there he will hold discussions with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and President Shimon Perez. First Lady Madam Shirant Rajapaksa and several ministers and parliamentarians are in the president's delegation. The government of Sri Lanka has decided to establish a training center for the Palestinian youth. The center will be established in the Ramallah city of West Bank. The Palestinian youth will be provided training at this center in areas such as tourism and hospitality, middle level health care and nursing and similar occasions. The Sri Lankan government will administer the center for an initial period of five years from January this year. The cabinet has approved this proposal presented by Minister of External Affairs, Professor G. L. Piris, under the direction of President Mahinda Rajapaksa. Well, in the meantime, another 15 Indian fishermen who violated the Sri Lankan maritime territories have been kept under surety custody until Monday. Three of their boats are also under police custody in Kalpitiya. 
The three vessels, 15 Indian fishermen and 60 kilograms of fish were taken into custody in the Sri Lankan Maritime Territory north of Mana last Thursday. The raids were carried out by the Carpentier Coast Guard unit of the Sri Lankan Navy. The fishermen were handed over by the Navy to the police and were presented before the acting magistrate Fasal Abdul Tahir of Putlam today. Meanwhile, the Malakam courts of Jaffna have ordered to keep under remand custody until 17th January another 30 Indian fishermen taken into custody for violation of Sri Lankan maritime territories. They have been taken into custody on the 5th of November last year for poaching in the sea areas of Jaffna. The Consumer Affairs Authority said that they will carry out extensive raids on places that hold milk without releasing them to the market. The chairman of the authority, Rumi Marzuk, said that several companies are acting unscrupulously with the objective of getting the prices increased. Several companies are creating an artificial shortage of milk powder, saying that milk powder prices have increased in the world market. Therefore, in many shops, except for infant milk powder, there is an acute shortage of other milk powder products. The consumers have made extensive complaints about this matter. Consumers complain that there is an acute shortage of milk products in the market and when they ask the agents, they state that there is no stocks available. It is very difficult to buy this product in the market. Some traders are not selling them even if they have these products. In many of the places, it has been hoarded and we believe that they are making this artificial shortage to force price increases. A well-known milk food exporting company is deliberately delaying getting the release from the customs large consignment of milk food imported by them. The Consumer Affairs Authority has received information that they are making this deliberate delay to get the prices increased. The Consumer Affairs Authority assured that milk food exporting companies will not be allowed to make their price increase. The chairman of the Consumer Affairs Authority, Rumi Marzuk, said that the officials of the raiding teams are conducting their raids successfully. He said that the Minister Johnson Fernando has instructed him to conduct the raids continuously and take stern action against the culprits. He said that it is inhuman to pressurize the consumers in this manner. Well, the three inmates who carried out a fast to death on the roof of the Bogumbur prison demanding to relax their sentences have given up their fast. Another 24 inmates are still carrying out their fast. A group of inmates who have been sentenced to death started the fast yesterday. They demand either to carry out their sentences or to release them. The fast is being carried out on the roof of the D section of the prison. Other inmates of the section have been transferred elsewhere. Security has been intensified around the area. The Commissioner General of the Prisons, Chandaratna Pallegama, told the National Rupwahini that he will hold discussions tomorrow with the inmates who are carrying out the fast. The Bogambar prison has 146 inmates who have been sentenced to death. In more local news, Minister Maitri Pal Sirisena said that the United People's Freedom F uh, Alliance will acquire power with a two-third majority in the forthcoming western and southern provincial elections. He said that this victory is imminent because of the development projects and people-friendly activities that have been carried out by the government. The minister made these comments at a function held in Gaul today to declare open the new Divisional Health Service Director's office. The old office was completely destroyed by the tsunami and the government has spent 110 million rupees to construct the new building which also houses the health training center. The minister said that the victory achieved by the United People's Freedom Alliance in the last provincial election for the southern province will be made a massive victory in the forthcoming election. The General Secretary of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, Minister Maitri Pala Sirisena, said that although it is 20 years since the introduction of the provincial council system, it is only during this era under the leadership of President Mahinda Raj Paksa, provincial councils have been established in all the nine provinces. No government in the past or no ruler of the past was able to achieve this feat. 
He said that elections for the provincial councils for the south and for the western province will be held shortly. In the provincial council elections held last year, the government achieved remarkable victories and over two-third majorities was obtained in the northern, in northwestern and central provinces. He said that the government has won the confidence of the people and has become popular among the people due to the massive development work that have been carried out and is being carried out at present. The minister said that it is very clear that two-third majorities will be obtained in the forthcoming southern and western provincial council elections due to the leadership being given to the country by the president Mahindra Rajapaksa. Deputy Speaker Chandi Muvirakodi and parliamentarian Dr. Ramesh Patrana also attended the function. Well, Minister Basu Rajapaksha said that no political party will be able to deceive the people in terms of development projects being implemented by the government. He said that the Divi Nagama Department is entrusted with a massive responsibility. The minister made these comments at a function held at the auditorium of the Ministry of Economic Development in connection with the signing of the gas of notification that legalizes the Divi Nagama Department. <laughs> The minister speaking at this occasion said today the opposition lowers without questions against the government. No one can demand to liberate the country as it already has been done. No one can demand to build an expressway from Katunaika to Colombo as it too has already been done by the president. No one can demand today to provide electricity as also been provided. The remaining balance is also to be provided this year. The minister speaking further said that no one can demand to make the country self-sufficient in rice as the farmers of this country have completed this task as well. The establishment of the Divinagama department was a challenge of making an attitudinal transformation in the country. This was also carried out respecting the rules and regulations of the independent commission. The year 2014 will be an year providing immense victories for the people of this country. <laughs> The air operation of transporting the Dolos Mahipahana and the parts of the bell tower to the Sri Pada Malwa will be completed tomorrow. The chief pilot of the operation, Wing Commander MASK Mahipala, said that already 75% of the parts have been airlifted. The airlifting operation is being carried out from the Lakshapana Stadium in Nalakani. It was started on the 2nd of this month. The weight of the Dolos Mahipahana and the bell tower amounts to about 20,000 kilograms. The Sri Lanka Ports Authority provided nets and other necessary equipment for transportation of these items. If these items were imported from Singapore, it would have cost about 3 million rupees. However, the Sri Lanka Ports Authority manufactured these items at a cost of only 3,000 uh, 3, rupees. The police as well as the people of the area and the pilgrims assisted the Air Force in this operation. This operation is being carried out under the guidance of the chief incumbent of the Sri Padasana Venerable Bengamwe Dhammadi Natero. Still on local news, the chief incumbent of the Lankarama Vihari in Sydney, Australia, Venerable Miga Hakumbure Dhammagave Shitera, has been appointed as the chief Sanganaika of the country. A felicitation ceremony in this connection was held at Temple Trees yesterday under the patronage of President Mahindraj Baksha. The chief Sanganaika post has been accorded to Venerable Dhammagave Shitera in recognition of his immense service for the development of the Lankarama Buddhist Vihari in Sydney. The Venerable Thera, who was ordained in the year 1981, acquired his education at the Hunupitiya Ganga Rama Pirvena in Colombo and Siri Vajira Nyana Dharma Yathane in Maragama. After that, the Venerable Thera became a social science graduate from the Sydney University and became the chief incumbent of the Sydney Lankarama Viharaya. Several books were written by the Venerable Dhamma Gaveshi Thera and the book titled Dhamma Gaveshi Abhinandana were presented to the President. Members of the Mahasangha, including the Anunayaka of the Vanavasi Nikaya of the Malvata chapter and the chief incumbent of the Madhakada Aranya in India, Venerable Ampite Mangala Thero, Prime Minister D.M. Jaratna, Deputy Minister M.K. Adigas Gunavodana also attended the function. <laughs>
Sri Lanka's permanent representative to the United Nations, Dr. Palita Kona, said that Sri Lanka has got the honor of becoming the first Asian country to host the World Youth Conference. The conference will be held in Sri Lanka in the month of May this year. The objective of the conference will be to find out the role of the youth in formulating the forthcoming Global Development Index. A workshop in this connection was held at the BMICH today to, uh, under the leadership of Dr. Partha Kohana to look into the holding of this conference. It is organized by the National Youth Services Council. The conference will look into the means of getting youth contribution for successfully achieving Millennium Development Goals of the United Nations. Dr. Partha Kohana pointed out that youth contribution is vital for formulation of policies. Well, the Defence Secretary Gautabi Rajapaksha emphasised that it is the duty of all chairmen of local government institutions to develop their towns in a people-friendly manner. The Defence Secretary made these comments participating in the Town Development Progress Review meeting of Kurunagala District. 16 sub-cities will be developed along with the Kurunagala town. Eight towns in the Putlam district will also come under this program. In all these towns, unauthorized structures will be removed. Steps have also been taken to construct pedestrian passages for people. The Defense Secretary instructed the officials who participated in the meeting to allocate suitable places for displaying posters and notices in the towns. The Defence Secretary also laid the foundation stone for the construction of the day resting centre of the Kurunagala town. The Chief Minister of the Northwestern Province, Daisiri Jaisekara, and several others attended the function. Meanwhile, the Defence Secretary also inspected the second stage construction work of the Mihindu Senpura multi storied housing complex in Demotagoda. He also inspected the housing complexes in 54th and 67th estates, Maligawata, Pradeep Mavata, Edir Singawata, Sirulsi Pereira Mavata, and Salamula. A letter of demand for 500 million rupees has been sent to the editor of Irida Lanka newspaper for publishing a report disparaging Mr. Vijayananda Herat, the media coordinating secretary of the president. The attorney of the president, media coordinating secretary Nilanta Vijasinghe, has sent this letter of demand stating his client has been insulted by an article published in the Lanka newspaper on the first page and in the third page of the Irida Lanka newspaper on the 29th of the month of December. The editor of the newspaper has been asked to pay the damage within 14 days. The letter of demand also states that if this payment was not made as requested, legal action will be taken against the editor, the publisher and the relevant reporter. Well, discussions about resettlement activities in the North Province were held yesterday under the chairmanship of the Minister of Resettlement and Rehabilitation, Gunaratna Vera Cohn. The meeting review progress achieved in the resettlement activities last year. The minister said that more development projects will be carried out in the resettlement areas this year. The minister said that further facilities will be provided to people resettled in Kopai and Teli Pale areas. The secretary of the ministry, John Exubadas, parliamentarians Murugesu Chandra Kumar, Sylvester Allentine, and the government agent Sundaram Arunegam also participated in the discussions. A media conference was held at the auditorium of the National Film Corporation yesterday to enlighten the media about the award received by the film Sri Siddhartha Gautama at the New Delhi Film Festival. The film Sri Siddhartha Gautama received the award for the best film presented by World Cinema Section at the New Delhi International Film Festival recently. The film was presented for this award ceremony by the Light of Asia Foundation. Navin Gunaratna, who produced the film, was also given a special award at this festival. The film has been directed by Saman Viraman and it features Gagan Malik in the title role together with Anchal Singh and several other actors and actr actresses. The chairman of the National Film Corporation, attorney at law, Ashok Kasir Singh, the producer of the film, Navin Gunaratna, the director of the film, Saman Viraman, and the main the actor of the film, Gagan Malik, also attended the media conference. Delhi is the place where they have accepted us so nicely you can see the world. Since I was small I would always take part in all the um, celebrations for Sri Lanka for our Independence Day celebrations. Well, here 
is the business report for today. The global business website World Finance has published a report about new business trends in Sri Lanka. The website has interviewed the managing director and chief executive of the Sri Lanka Insurance Corporation, Mr. Mohan D. Alves. I'm back with Mohan D. Alves, MD and CEO of Sri Lanka Insurance Corporation. You spoke last time about the ongoing infrastructure projects. Tell us more. Some of the better known projects that we have are at Hambantota. The port at Hambantota uh, is being developed. There is an airport that is being developed at Hambantota. At the same time, there are a number of other ports, and amongst them, the Colombo Port Extension is the more important project that we have. And there have been uh, many. Uh, power projects that have gone through, there have been hydropower projects that have been going through, the road network project which is the Katunayaka Expressway, there are some highways that are coming up. And how will this help businesses and improve the economy? Any economy requires the infrastructure to be developed. In the past uh, four years, uh, post-war era in Sri Lanka after the third year war year ended in 2009, there's been many infrastructure projects. The growth rate in Sri Lanka has been phenomenal. We've had growth rates of 8.3, uh, 6.5, and now this year we are targeting somewhere around 7% growth. Now, all of these require infrastructure. And with infrastructure projects coming through, other business ventures would be in a position to come in. So what do you foresee for Sri Lanka within the next five years? There will be lots of opportunities for foreign investors and it will be a country that will boom, in my opinion. With this kind of uh, growth rates, Sri Lanka is tipped to be one of the best growing countries and better countries to invest. Mohan, thank you. Thank you very much. The Sri Lankan rupee ended in a steady position yesterday after the central bank bought dollars to prevent appreciation due to inflows. The spot price of the rupee closed at 130.70 to 0.75 per dollar, hovering around its highest price since October 25th. The central bank purchased dollars at 130.70 rupees to prevent any appreciation. Meanwhile, the central bank in its financial and monetary policies for the year 2014 said it expects the rupee to strengthen in the medium term and its direct intervention in foreign exchange market would be minimum. The market report said that dealers expect the currency to appreciate in the first quarter of 2014 due to possible dollar bond inflows. The rupee has gained about 3.4% since it hit a record low of 135.20 on August 28th. At least 100 polling stations in Bangladesh have been torched ahead of tomorrow's controversial election. The violence came as the opposition, which is boycotting the vote, began a two-day strike in protest at what is called a scandalous farce. At least 100 people have been killed during weeks of election violence. The opposition wants a neutral caretaker administration to oversee the election, as in previous years, something the government has refused. Police and election officials reported arson attacks at around 100 polling stations in some 20 districts around the country, including in the capital, Dhaka. Many polling stations are based in schools and other civic buildings. A government administrator in the southeastern Chittagong region said there would, be, there would not be any polls cancelled there as a result of the attacks. In other violence, police said at least 12 people were injured when a petrol bomb was hurled through the window of a train in the northwest town of Nato. With that, we wrap up the news. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Good night.